Welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show Workshop. I'm here because I want to make a little implement for catching more fish. It's called a swim feeder. I've never made one before. It's an experiment. It could go horribly wrong, but I lost so many on a recent trip to the River Wye. I thought, do you know what? I'm going to have a go at making my own because I got a hold of some mesh that's very much the same size as many of the swim feeders. Now, there's a huge variety of swim feeders out there. For those of you who live in different countries and don't know what a swim is, you obviously think a swim is where you go off into a swimming pool or the sea. But for here in England, I don't know, it's some obscure reason that the area we fish on a river or a lake we call a swim. It is a bit weird, isn't it? We're a strange lot over here in England. Anyway, the idea is to put bait into the area you're going to fish or your swim, to baiting up an area just to draw the fish towards you. These are some of the, well, these are huge variety of different types of feeders that you can get. Here's my box I put all my feeders in. Now these are really giant jumbo ones and they're the big ones that we really you know use on big powerful rivers like the Y. These are these are a guy called Woody has these made up I think and you get them up at Hereford in his tackle shop and they're very almost as he says they can take the pain. You can just squash them and they're really really tough. So you can actually as you would normally have a feeder and fill that full of ground bait there like that, you can, as well as this weight to hold it on the riverbed, you can you can actually make it slightly oval, so maybe that would that would cling on the bottom of the riverbed a little bit better. So let's just run through some of these feeders for you. These ones are the traditional open end feeder, just a mesh cage, they come in different weights, different sizes, and they've got a support here, they've got the actual weight here or lead or whatever it is that's on the bottom makes it sink to the uh, river or the lake bed mostly for river fishing this size then a length of let's call that support line or rubber valve rubber i guess it is and a swivel through which you pass your fishing line and then down to the hook i'll show you the rig up lately later but that's the actual shape there of the open end feeders heavy duty style you can also get just so i'll show you while they're here this type of feeder which is one that you can you can thread the line right through the middle. I, I've not used these ones. These are one somebody somebody just gave me these to say put those in. You've you've not got those in your tackle box. Try them. So they've got an integral weight in there, but you can crush a ball of ground bait around the outside of that, slide that up your fishing line, have a little stop knot, and then your hook say five, six, seven, eight inches away from it, or as long as you want. So that's I don't actually know the name of those to be honest, people, but that's what they're for for squeezing the boat bait around. We've got the traditional lighter plastic open end feeders here. Now, these ones come in a, a huge different range of sizes. And of course, again, you, you, all I've done with some of these to make them flatter, you can squeeze them, put some hot water in, and then let them set like that. But generally, with these, you know, they've got the lead, the weight here. They're fairly rigid. And again, I've tied this one off with a length of fishing line there because I was using this for tension. I like a long link to my feeder. Some of them come and they've actually got the link attached to the strip there, the weight strip, with a little feeder as well. Or you can put a clip on there if you want a clip. So they're an open end feeder. Basically, you, you pack your bait in here and the stuff like maggots in the middle can wriggle out. What else have we got? We've got these which we used to use a lot years ago. These are called block in feeders. We used to use this a lot for barbel down on the Hampshire Avon, and they use them up on the Severn. And these are what's called ski leads, which they they actually would come. Let's show you this one like this. They would come like that with it with with the uh, lead strip folded around it. But to make additional weight, generally up on the river, seven big heavy rivers, they got these things, which they call skis, and they call them ski leads, ski weights. So you can imagine that's quite a chunk of, of weight on there. And you would thread that on your line as well. Oh, line goes through that wider loop there. And when you want to pop it open, you've poured all your maggots in there. This is almost certainly maggots only. Maggots and hemp is what you have on theirs. And you can run through the middle here and through the bottom there. So that's a block-in feeder, obviously, because it's blocked both ends. You can get these other ones, like the method, modern method feeder types, where you can... Uh, uh, squeeze your ground bait on top and then this is called an inline one this one it uh, it pops off there with a, a safety link 
um, and the swivel basically goes up against it there and then your hook link if you can imagine a dome of ground bait on the top of that the hook link rests on top and again very heavy very heavy still waters or you can use them on rivers as well so it's a different shape of feeder what else have we got in there oh yeah these are popular ones again maggots only they call black caps again they come with weights here like black cat feeder 40 grams and what you do is you have the same pop-off cap that you had with these as you can see the block ends but it's on a spring it's on a little bit of a spring support there so you don't actually lose the cap you just pop it over pour all your maggots and hemp or whatever you want small stuff in there and pop it back closed and it does the same thing it's got quite big holes there but you can actually drill the holes out bigger if you want to distribute more bait more maggots more hemp into the river so different weights there you can see one two three different weights there okay my idea though is to try and make a mesh feeder and this is how i'm going to do it okay now here's what i'm going to be making my swim feeder out of wait for this i think it was 6.95 might be 5.95 an entire sheet and it is fencing there as you can see it's called shore fence is it shore fence i can't read it backwards galvanized handy mesh panel 6 10 mil by 9 10 mil and the actual square size here is 6 mil by 6 mil now my pellets are 4 mil the ones i'm using the actual feed pellets are 4 mil so i feel 6 mil by 6 mil is a very handy size i'm going to be cutting it into strips a little bit wider than some of the feeders i've got here sort of average size and then on top of that i've got god almighty i could do some more exercises i've got some of this stuff this is what we call lead flashing over here in the uk i don't know what you call it in other countries it's just well it's lead flashing for roofing but it's flat so it's handy to cut into strips so i'm going to give that a go got a bit of old scrap lead left over as well i'll also hammer that out and cut it into strips like this then i got some very very strong fishing line left over from marlin fishing days <clears throat> i think this is about excuse me i think it's about 130 pound test so there's no fish swimming in a British river that's going to break this off. I'm going to be using a number 10 barrel swivel here, that's that size, for the end of the feeder, a little small barrel swivel. And that, folks, pretty well is it, other than a variety of, oh no, tell a lie. Some of these, these are called mini double sleeves. They are, I'll show you in close-up when I get set up making one, like this. And you, you shut those, they're going to crimp the swivel on. I'm not going to knot it because 130 pound test is pretty difficult to knot. I'm going to be used cup to cup, not cup to point, cup to cup, crimping tool, swaging tool, I think they call it, with these sleeves. Let's get cracking and knock one of these feeders out. Okay, now I'm going to cut this about eight squares wide. Now you can see here there's a tag end, because I've already had a go at chewing it, and I find the best thing to cut them with are these, what we call over here in the UK, tin snips. Or you can use this regular, let's get that out of the way, wire cutters like those, but I find the tin snips are better. So let's go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? And then I'm going to cut as near to this side here as I can. So in other words, if you can see that wire right by the tip of my thumb now, I'm going to cut it and leave, you can see this, the same tag end as I've got here, which will be apparent when I've done it because that's what I'm going to use for let's go snip 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 away we go we're off now I'm going to do the whole run of this to, you know that gives me probably enough to do four or five big feeders in one go and I figure that's a way to do it and cut as close to that line as I can you get a little tag end here and I'm going to rough that off in a minute but I mean listen Guys, this is all a major experiment that I just know, I just know it's going to work and it's going to save me a packet. I'm not going to say I will lose less feeders, because if you're fishing snaggy areas, you're going to lose feeders. But boy, oh boy, it's going to be a lot more pleasant at those prices for a homemade one. I'm pretty sure this is the way forward in snaggy areas.
and along along this edge here I'm just going to rub it over my grinding wheel without the motor running there's tiny little edges to that so I'm just going to I'm not going to do it with the wheel turning guys I think that's too risky for a tangle just going to take the worst of it off I guess you could file it if you wanted to I'm into mass production at the moment I'm just going to try and get the worst of it off and then rough grind it on the other edge rough grind this side again so you've got two smooth edges once you get a new sheet you've always got one clean edge you know you can work around the edges you've always got one clean edge okay I've ground off both edges I'm going to roll it into the rough feeder shape I want and I want to overlap it and do the cut let's say that's the diameter I want I'm going to cut along here if you can see this I hope you will I'll do it in close up in a minute I'm going to cut and I'm going to leave the tag end sticking up because I want to push them through here and use them to bend over to complete that circle and then the strip the weight strip goes over the top of that so I'm going to go for that's quite a lot of ground bait isn't it guys actually but if I'm going like barbell and chub fishing trust me they can eat it I'm going to go for there so keep your fingers on it right let's get the old snips and I'm going to cut this time tight up against as you're looking at it from the camera the left hand side because I want to leave you can hear it pop I want to leave those tag ends sticking up sometimes you get trouble with the last one hang on a minute yeah I thought so always happens to me just get that last one could use a cutters to nip that off okay fine now then I get the long nose pliers these ones and just put a little slight backwards kink in those tag ends I don't want to buckle them too much because hopefully you can see that they are going to roll around in here and I'm going to go one two there about the third one in I'm going to loop those tag ends up if you can see that there loop the tag ends up I guess you're going to see them like that way maybe and then to hold the actual feeder together I'm just going to bend them down using the long nose forceps 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 grab your fishing or pipe fishing already they're pliers and then when I get the den I can push them right round flat crush them totally look you can see that's starting to hold it all together and of course the other thing I'm going to do is you're left with this tag end here a little bit sticking up there but what I'm going to do my lead strip my weight of whatever I'm going to use in which case I'm going to use my lead flashing if you can imagine I'm going to cut my strip up it's going to go over that tag end there and fold around in here so let's cut a strip of lead up of the you've got to guess this unless you want to cut your strips of lead up and actually make it to the required weight you think you want of course rivers go up and down could be flood conditions so I'd suggest making some heavy some medium and some light okay I've got my lead flashing my roof flashing here I reckon I could get you've got to allow a little bit just a, a, a tag end there to fold over and this end so I think out of that length I think this is six inch flashing I could probably get two feeders easily I would say so it's just a question of how big I want to cut this strip I could double it over make it extra heavy let's try one about let's say a half inch wide because that to me yeah, maybe it's not a perfect measurement so use a tin snips look if you don't get a straight edge does it matter it's not rocket science is it well needs to be with me oh that's fine gonna cut that in half just double check that will fold over there yeah that's about right same that size nice if I measured it but hey ho okay this is so simple making these for oh, I've never done this years ago is beyond me right so that's what I've got that end there as you can see I'm gonna bend that round like this now that one can go over hopefully you can just see that that tag in there that's the end I'm going to use my base I'm going to cover it up so 
It's actually held together by two different places here. There's the wire, pinched up on the lead. I'm going to turn it round and I'm going to just pinch it in there a little bit. Now what I'm going to do on this side, to take my, my holding trace if you like, just nip a little tag end off there, slightly a tag in there. I'm going to get the bend in it ready to take the bit of fishing line. Get about six inches of fishing line. Snip it off. And then all I'm going to do, so simple, I'm going to turn one overhand knot in there. Pull it down like that. There's the tag in. Snip the tag end off. Now I'm just going to make a slip knot. Just like this. Hopefully you guys are seeing all this. Oh, pull that tight. That then goes over. See the little tag end I've made? How about if I tied the slip knot that didn't come apart? That's what I told you. 130 pound test mono, which is my fishing line for marlin. Or big blue marlin anyway, not small ones. It's pretty tricky to work with, but it's tight and it's exceedingly strong. Pull up that mono into the neck of oh, the weight. You can see I've pinched it round there. Pull that knot nice and tight. And then without damaging the mono, just roll that lead flashing back round like this. Okay, that's pulled tight there. Next thing is, I've got to... There's my swivels. I'll just show, show you how to see. I think they're number 10 swivels. I think they're 50 pound test. And these are 1.3 beryllium copper mini double sleeves. You can buy all this at Tackle Outlets generally. I'm going to slide up. I'll tell you what's a tip. Nip off that end at an angle so it's not burred. Then you get the 1.3, it goes through. You put that tag end through. Difficult to film and do this at the same time. Through the swivel so it's running. Back through the other side of the double sleeve. It's like a figure of eight when you look at it end wise. Now I'm going to go for, you can alter the length of this as you want. I'm guessing most feeders are a couple of inches, something like that. Put it down a little bit more. About there. And then, I've got that quite tight. I'm going to get my swaging tool mini double sleeves. Cup to point are not really good for mono. They pressure it. These are cup to cup. You can see cup to cup, each one. Going to use the M1. Got it. That will never move. Simply snip off the tag end, voila, there's a feeder, <clears throat> but what I'm going to do is just tap that down with a hammer to round it right in and pinch on itself, use a vice. Hammer I'm using is a tack hammer because it's got a very, very narrow edge there, and if you can see that I'm just going to tap that end down, so it rolled and curled over the top there, there's my mono pulled tight out the way. Just a forward tap and just basically rolling that lead and pinching it, burn it over. And there you go, one feeder, well, ready to use, in fact, ready to be lost. And there you go, an absolute bunch one, two, three, four, five, six feeders here I've made in what, not much more than an hour, different weights up to about just under two ounces, so big. Big chunky things. There's only one thing to do, and that's add water and see if they're going to work. Might even paint one, I don't know. That's just half a dozen made out of that one sheet I can actually make. Wait for this. Over 55 swim feeders. I can't wait to get down the river. And where better to do some feeder fishing than down here on the River Y? Big powerful river these big powerful swim feeders but this is how I've rigged mine up just an experiment because there's so much movement if you like shock I feel when I pick up the strike with a big feeder I've got to hit the feeder before I hit the fish so I'm figuring if I put a piece of valve rubber tubing there it acts like a bit of a spring you can see it moving so I actually nick the fish hopefully with a bit of movement through that valve rubber before it actually moves the feeder otherwise I'm striking and I've got to move the feeder as well and then what I've done is just put a little bead on there, a bit basic, I know it's a sea bead. Um, then I've got my swivel 
I've got a trace about 30 inches long and there you can see a banded pellet on there and now I'm going to fill it up with ground bait and fire it out there. So I've got a mix of wet 4 mil pellets here because look they can go through the feeder pretty easily. I'm going to put a good hard base in there. I've soaked them on the drive up here actually. I've left them about a good 2 or 3 hours soaking. So I'm going to pack them quite tight because the, the river's pretty well cranking through today. Now in between the two I'm going to put my hook baits which are the pellets, the darker pellets, a dozen or so of those, and then some regular coarse pellets back over the top, just like that. And I'm packing it down quite a bit because last time I was filming with the underwater camera, I did notice it empties pretty quickly, and that takes a lot of bait. This this feeder. So there we are. It's all loaded up. Let's post it out in the river and see what we can catch. I've got the rods up as high as I can get them on the extended rod rest and bother with buzzers or anything. Just going to be sitting watching them go over. In fact, one I've got a quiver tip on, uh, a quite a stiff quiver tip with a white tip. The other one I haven't even bothered, just a regular even rod. So I figure with this amount of pressure on the water, on the line, just put any quiver tip round and I'm going to see the bite against that backdrop there. So I've got them as high as I can get them, trying to keep them out as much current as I can so hopefully the feeder won't bump out of position. We'll soon find out. Seems like they're holding at the moment. Now the other thing is, last time I came here it was gin clear, now it's coloured, pushing through quite a bit. Woody told me in the tackle shop that um, and Mick the bailiff has been around uh, said exactly the same put some meat on you know when it's colder they tend to go off the pellet but of course the last time I caught I caught on pellet so I'm trying the pellets at the moment but I might have to um, go back on, on well, not go back on go on the meat and see if I can't pick a fish up that way but a good gear of the pellet I reckon good two hours a good two hours Suddenly fell out the chair I'm actually on. I can't honestly remember whether it was the small pellet or the big pellet. But I don't think this is a chub. I don't think it's a chub the way it's digging. I have to put my other rod back a bit here. I mean, oh my god, a homemade swim feeder. Please let me just see the fit. Oh, it's coming easy now, maybe it's a chub. I can see my feeder. <laughs> well, if it's a chub, it's a big chub. Surely not. Oh, it's only a barbel. It's only a barbel and a homemade feeder. Let's see if I can get it down there for you. Oh my god, it's so exciting, I can't tell you. The rigs work, the tubings work, the beads work. I'll try and film and fish at the same time. It's never, never a good mixture. Recipe for a lost fish here. Come on, fish. Whoa, it's not a small one, it's about five pounds, I think. Oh, 
you know I mean? That is satisfaction in a nutshell. Decent barbel. Might go six pounds. The feeder's here in the net. Well, it's tangled now. I've got to find an anti tangle feeder anti tangle in the net rig. But there you go. What a fish. What a fish and what a river. OMG. I mean, it's got to be my favourite species. And on a homemade feeder, I've been fishing well, well over 50 years. To make a feeder like that and catch fish on it, inside an hour, I tell you what, I love all that DIY stuff. It's just fun. People don't seem to want to experiment much nowadays, but I love it. Let's get this guy back. I want to get that feeder out there again. Peeps are on again. Small fish this time. I think this one might be a chub. Yeah. This one's a chub and big mistake I've made here. You can see as I, I zoom in on that. You, you can see that I haven't, uh, I squeezed the feeder too hard there. And the feeder hasn't emptied, so I've got to remember next time not to squeeze it quite so hard. Let's get in there, get in there. Strangely enough, I did think, I wonder if that's a chub on there. And it is, not a very big fish, but just goes to show you, the feeders work now for two species, chub and barbel. And it's still not over yet. Brilliant. Well, this is a nice chunky chub to catch. And this time I put a small cube of luncheon meat after Mick the Bailey said, if you don't get them on pellets, get uh, luncheon meat out there. And that's what I did, a small cube of luncheon meat. And it just buckled the rod round. So maybe I should stick luncheon meat all the time now. I don't know, I might go back to pellets. Nice fish, shows that feed of system work. So have a bit of fun with it. Thanks for watching Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Hit that subscribe button, watch our playlist. Don't forget, if you do subscribe, it costs you nothing. See you next time. I'm going to get this guy back in the water. Guys, I've had a nightmare trying to get a fish out of a, a 
a Sinead, I think I might have got it out. It's definitely a barbel. I'm hoping I've got it out. I've, I've absolutely, oh yeah, I'm on breaking point with the line. And I think I've just got it through the weed. I must have left it 20 minutes. Kept tightening up. So don't automatically pull for a break when you do get snagged up. And you'll see by my current attire the temperature's dropping. Oh, this feels like a good fish. Feels like a good one. No more snags, no more snags. I oh, keep it hot. See the feeder. Oh, what? 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 It's a cracker. I'm going to try and. Right, so now he lost it then. Whacked up on the drag, it's a big fish. Big, big fish, man, I'd like to get this one of that. Oh man, I should have netted it, I should have netted it, not mess with the camera. I've lost so many big fish over the years. So many numbers of fish messing around with a bloody camera. I'll tell you what, I'm going to set the camera up. I'm going to just take an angle on it. It might be blurred, it might be whatever. I just gotta get this fish and have to get in with it. I'm not even sure if it's gonna go in there. I've got a booty, I've got a booty. I'll tell you what boys, I've got a double. I don't need to weigh this one. Holy What do you think, 11 pounds? It is an absolute, an absolute animal. And I must have waited 20 minutes to get that out of that weed bed. Could easily have pulled for a break, could easily have pulled for a break. But I could feel the fish seesawing with the weed. Look at that fish. That is a thumper. Wackadoo, was I lucky? Too chub, too barbel, but well, what a barbel to get on my own personally homemade swim feeder. Let's get it back. Check out the thickness across the back of this head. That is a chunk, is it not? What a beauty. What a beauty. Just look at that one. Ready to go. Fantastic. I really don't know what to say. I don't know what to say about these feeders. It's obviously the River Wye, full of fish. Full of barbel that pull the string like you wouldn't believe. Now this one's not in the same league as the last one, but I'll take any barbel that comes along at this stage of the day, because it is packing up time. Get you some shots here, as always, trying to get you people some shots, shots, shots. Pictures, pictures, pictures. Whole life is filming. Actually, gone uh, from the meat, I've gone back on the pellet again. I put the rod out with the pellet and put a longer tail on it, about five feet. Well, I'm saying it's done the trick. I think it's just 
barbell time, isn't it? In dusk, late afternoon, early evening. There's one thing I do need, it's the net. You excuse me for a moment. All that line going all the way out again. You have to respect the fight of a barbel. out to the swim. Oh, I can't do a thing with this one. Come on fish. Get him in, get another cast out there. Oh no wonder it's a nice fish. Oh that's why I, that's why I couldn't do much with him. He's probably seven Probably seven pounder. You need a part, so of your boys, he goes, and I say, fair play to me, he goes, listen, I'll come over now and then I already goes, but me, you're talented. Ain't really good. Come on, mate. Right, buddy. Right, mate. Okay. Had any luck, Shag? He's on near. The luck's here. Hey! <laughs> Hopefully. Oh, here he is, look. Hey! Oh, were you lucky, Charles, boy? Yeah, you are, aren't you? Yeah. Cook her up, Chuck. They see you coming with those yellow jackets. Oh my god, I shouldn't be bantering with these people. This is very, very close. Two eight pounds. Look at this one. That's a big barbel. Give it a matter, I'll show it to you, get it back, and I might get one more card. Here he goes, people. I guess. It's seven and a half. I'm gonna give him seven and a half. I don't think it'll quite go eight. But what a beauty. Let's get it back. What a session. Go on, go on. I feel I'm going to sneak one more cast in.